Pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. 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 Allegiance
this technology is actually a good size distance away. Um, and we, we also identified an area on the, on the property, uh, the water tank parcel that would be kind of even with the tank in its, you know, in its location wise. I and mean, we draw it up and do it, you know, an engineering layout of it, but we put it in a location that's not going to interfere with any of the maintenance of the tank, any of the pipes underground. A little bit more due diligence would need to be done, but we, we have copies of all the plans that we can kind of sketch out the location. So, um, is that it, Joe? Yeah, I mean, let, the, the, I don't know if this, this is the venue to talk about the rent options or not, or. That's floor. Um, one of the, uh, I believe the mayor has, when we originally did the proposal for the water tank, we talked about rent being $1,500 a month. Uh, then I, I backtracked. It was in my era that I, I did that. But we, we can't do that for a new tower because of the expense to build a new tower. But we provided two options, alternatives to do either one, do $1,000 a month, and we can, uh, if at least a 50 by 50, and if someone else goes on the tower, the, the village would get some revenue, a couple hundred dollars a month. Or Verizon can just lease its shelter space and tower. If another carrier comes on, they would lease from the um, Verizon for the tower space and have to do a separate lease with the village. The advantage of doing that is you're dealing directly with the carrier itself. You get a little bit more control over the deal. Um, I mean, you're not going to get as much as Verizon, you know, I don't want to throw out numbers here, but if someone comes in and, you know, maybe four or five hundred dollars a month, which is probably common for a 10 by 20 or 20 by 20 lease area for another carrier, and there's enough adequate room to do there. So, I mean, that's something you guys could talk about, and, and uh, I don't know which route you want to take on that, but at the end of the day, it may have more incentive. I mean, there's no guarantee how many carriers come in, but there's an, you know, obviously there's a need in this area. Um, you have T-Mobile out there, you have AT&T, Singular, um, same, uh, you have RCC in this area, right? See, Sprint and Excel. So there's three or four other carriers that could use the site. Maybe they come in three weeks from now, or maybe they come in three years from now, or never, but they're still, um, still a viable location. And, uh, what's a ballpark figure to build a, a tower, to put up a tower like here? <clears throat> um, ballpark to, to build, the, not including the, the radio equipment and the shelter, to put up the tower, all the pre-due diligence that goes into it, you know, our time and all that. I mean, anywhere, probably around $215,000. Uh, you know, it depends. I mean, the steel now is expensive. I mean, that site... It's not like you have to build a mile road or run power. It's a pretty, it's a relatively simple site to build. Uh, then, as far as the equipment that Verizon puts in and on the tower, you could be looking at another couple hundred thousand dollars. So, at, at the end of the day, it could be upwards of three, four, five hundred thousand dollars total investment for the site. You know, the other question I think you answered. I just want to make sure that down the road, that if we go with this, that there's going to be a, a opportunity to maybe expand it. It looks like there will be that. Yeah, I mean, high enough and Verizon, I mean, we're going to build the, the site adequate enough to, and, and this will all be part of any resolutions that the village passes. But usually Verizon builds its towers a whole to accommodate three other carriers, uh, three other typical installations. Um, there's enough property there where either uh, there's enough room to locate in Verizon's compound, 50 by 50 outside of the compound. And, I mean, Verizon, as far as the carriers go, take up the biggest area. But T-Mobile, they, they don't build shelters, for instance. They may only take up a 10 by 20 location and just put a cement pad down in equipment cabinets. But I think that could all be, um, you could set certain parameters on that um, in terms of uh, either from a, a zoning process or a, uh, you know, even through the leasing process, that, that stuff could be put in there. So you have some assurance of that. There's no guarantees, uh, but you know, there's some sites you drive around and have every carrier on, and there's some sites that have no carrier. It just depends on when the carriers want to cover an area. Sometimes when a carrier comes on first, they realize that, okay, Verizon's providing good coverage in their 18 might say we need to get there too. Mm -hmm. 
Is there anything negative for the environment or for the village residents? Can we put it down up like this? Um, I could kind of really say no. Uh, I mean, there's Verizon does its whole array of, of phase one environmentals and all the other due diligence as far as the impacts. Uh, and Rick could, could I'll, I'll speak as a layman, but Rick could kind of answer more detail. But the FCC, when it came out with the Telecommunications Act of 1996, there's, there's strict rules. In, in the act based on years of studies that if the carrier or the provider is within certain thresholds they are uh, they're, they're, they're preempted meaning a village or a town cannot deny from a zoning perspective Verizon or any other carrier for that matter because of any health concerns uh, if the threshold is I just use an arbitrary number is 100 usually your typical carrier is at like what, 0 0.01 of that yes so, I mean, it's very, I mean, all this stuff, you know, Verizon run a report, um, there's the, the type of, uh, any, all these fluorescent lights are emitting an electric magnetic field, uh, your, your toaster does, and there's no health risk associated with it. So there's no, nothing negative. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the, the I mean, it's the only, the things that come up, I, I'll just speak from experience, is the question that always comes up is aesthetics. Obviously, you know, I can show you a picture of a typical, I mean, this is just a typical lattice tower. So it's a very common type of, of tower. I think I emailed you this, Mary. Yeah, I think I only had it work on. And here's just more of a close-up of what the shelter looks like there. Yeah, so we have one up on 276. It's a microwave tower, but up if you go here, you know what the typical antennas look like on top of the tower. Mm. Have you uh, done any research in other areas in the town of Champlain where you might locate a tower? We've. Um, what, and I guess what, what what drew you to the village of Rogers Point specifically? Specifically, was the existing structure Verizon. Wireless tries to co locate on an existing structure. We originally targeted this area because there was an existing structure that we could place antennas on. You know, water. A water tank, yes. Um, actually, originally it was the old water tank. We, I didn't even know until I drove up here that we noticed there was a new water tank. And that, that's what you targeted on originally, right? Uh, because it's just it's, it's more palatable to the community. Uh, that we can call a can search, so that's why we're here. And now we've kind of went down this road. We've, uh, we've the village and Verizon has spent some time and money on looking at this, and uh, this is just another option now. And instead of co locating on the tank, we'd still like to, you know, so far the village has been great to work with. And if we can uh, put something on village property and the, red, the village gets the benefit of it, uh, as well as providing essential services to the area. I mean, obviously, it's right across the street, Champ the town of Champlain. It's not that it, it can't work. We're just kind of here now. Yeah, um, I'm just wondering because, like, Route 276 is a is a pretty high location. I don't know if that makes any difference. You know, I mean, it, that, uh, if you're gonna, how does it? Would it enhance the service in the town of Champlain at the at, like on Interstate 87? Is that you know, that's a pretty high highly traveled area and they get limited, if any, tower service there at the port of entry in Champlain. Is this going to enhance their capability? No, this, this wouldn't get over that far. This wouldn't get that far. No, you guys are not on that tower up on uh, the Ridge Road. I know they got, uh, there, there's some cell phone service on that tower. We, we have a, a site in the village of Champlain, but to be honest with you, I don't know yeah, it's probably on the Ridge Road. Yeah, it doesn't. Going back to here, like to say, going back to 276, <coughs> you're right on the border, so you're limiting your coverage. You know, like you want to go 360, but up there you've got 50 percent of the towers is going to be going into Canada, which you can't do. So, you know, you could if you're on Mason's Corners, you could go 360 because you'd be you'd be farther south and you're the water tank here. That wouldn't so. cover, I, I don't understand, you're going to have a tower here, and who's it going to service? The, this, this village and the roads in and out from, from the northwest. So what, what is the range then? 
Let's, if, let's suppose you build a tower that's 20 to 30 feet above the water tanks. What's the range of coverage? It, it'll go really, really good as, as far west as there's, I don't know the area particularly well, but, but there's a ridge line that raises up probably 50, 60, 70 feet. And, you know, it's like an industrial park out there, I would guess roughly halfway between here and uh, Champlain. And, and that's about as far as the cover, very, very strong. And as far north as the border? Yeah, well, we have to. We would have to physically limit it by, you know, applying down to the, you know, uh, decreasing mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. So how about let's say Route Two over here? Same, same with that. We have similar, similer power uh, constraints into Vermont as well as uh, Canada. Right, but in other words, let's take the streets at the northern part of the village. For example, Rose Avenue. Would mm -hmm. those people be able to access the tower? Or are they too close to Vermont and Canada? No, they, uh, they would absolutely be able to. Okay. And how far? I mean, uh, if the tower must get a signal from some other tower, right? No? No, it's all completely independent. There's, there's a physical uh, T1 line or multiple T1s that are run to the site that is powered individually. So the, the T1s would actually route the, the call calls back to Albany at the switch facility in Albany. And, and how far south is the range going to be? It would probably, well, on the lake it would go you know, as far as, you know, if you were standing up on the tower and look down the, the lake, you know, as far as you can see down the lake is how far it will go. But as, but as far as the, uh, you know, the roads and the, the houses <coughs> to the south, roughly five miles. Somewhere between four and a half to five miles. Where's your next Verizon tower? In one, one in Champlain and then, you know, we're built up down the highway, but nothing east of the highway. Until you get down to Plattsburgh. So you, you want to, I, maybe I don't understand this, but you want to put a tower in the village of Rides Point and you're saying that you're going to spend up to $500,000, you possibly at one of these sites, and it's only going to service the people in the village of Rides Point? Am I missing something? It seems know. to be the range that, that they're telling I mean, us the, the tower. Yeah, yeah. Village, I don't know. I mean, we got 2,400 residents in the village of Rods Point, and you're going to spend a half a million dollars to put a tower up. I think that, I mean, just about, I mean, that, that's an average, that's a high end number. I mean, roughly. It, it could be a little less, it could be a little more in some instances. But, I mean, when sites are designed, I mean, Verizon is, uh, you know, the Albany's and the urban core centers and Plattsburgh, I mean, it's had site for 15 years there. I mean, this is, some of these areas are sort of the, you know, uh, the last frontier, for lack of a better word. I mean, carriers want to provide uh, service uh, to as much of the population as possible. I mean, you might have a site in, in New York City that they spend the same amount of money and it covers 300,000 people. Uh, or a site in somewhere in, uh, Franklin County that covers 600 people, uh, but they're still, you know, I'm sure you've all driven through some very rural areas and have excellent coverage on your cell phone. It's because it's the provider network. I noticed that going west this time before we didn't have coverage in Albany. Yeah, there's a couple of hours out there. Yes. But when you, let's say you were in Vermont, what you would hit a horizon tower in Vermont with a uh, uh, Verizon telephone, uh, cell phone? Yeah. I mean, it's no, it's, uh, this is just a, a unique area because of the partnership. I mean, I, I do a lot of work in lower New York where you're going back and forth between Connecticut and New York. And I mean, it's, it's a nationwide, it's a nationwide system. It's not just, ex, you know, mm -hmm. inclusive of a, a very specific area. But the, you know, similar to Joe's point, I mean, you, you start out when you build a network, you hit the major pop centers and the corridors that connect them, and then you, you go out and you stand out from that. Maybe 40,000 or 30,000, and you know, eventually get out to where, you know, actually 2,000, 2,500 people is, you know, it's a, a fair fair population center. And it's this thing, is just, you know, as far as the networks have matured. That's trying to fill in the, the yeah. around the yeah. area. So, so what the if, okay, so. We don't have, we wouldn't have the roaming charges then, I would guess, right? If we had a Verizon and we were close to the border, now we wouldn't be picking up a tower from Burlington or one from Canada. We'd, we'd 
Yeah, the, the, the local one would be so much stronger that your, your chances of jumping off of it, yeah. the uh, Canadian network would be significant. Yeah, because those people that are traveling through the area also, right? Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'd never hit a, a Burlington Tower from here, though, because of the distance, right? That, that's well, part, of, part of the issue and why we have to limit our power. Most, most of the sites are capped at a 10 mile mm -hmm. radius because of the way that. Yeah, but you take a site on the top of Manhattan. You can see it from right across the lake. Yeah, so so it's conceivable, even, you know, even as far away as Killington, you know, we've had some trouble in, in Plattsburgh where, you know, because it's nearly a line of sight, there's nothing to stop the signal. So it, it's there, you just can't access it. So so you might find areas on, on the west side of the lake where I got four bars and I can't make a phone call it's because you know, your phone is seeing something that's maybe 50 miles away. <laughs> you just you can't get out of the system won't let you. So the only way you can fix that is to build local. You know, local sites, you know, all the way down the side. Of now, when you look at the site of the water tank, um, where you're going to need this ground space and to construct the building that's uh, going to obviously service the tower, it's a 50 by 50 area. Which side of the tower are we talking about? Where where will this be located up there? In our east corner. And where will the tower be? That, that corner. So yeah. Usually, what we would try to do is if you're going north on Academy Street, it would be in the, uh, um, you know, the tank would be on your left, and you make that little gravel road. It would be on the, I guess, yeah, it would be on the north side of the tank as far back as we can without interrupting the uh, any of the pipes or the easements, the, the, the underground power or water lines. Uh, with a 50 by 50 fence in area, they usually put the towers in the middle um, of the 50 by 50 area and then the shelter. And just a lot of it depends on the, the levelness of the ground, it's usually right beside it. The 12 by 30 shelter with a backup generator to it. And what have other communities asked you to do to make the, uh, the entire structure building more aesthetically pleasing? Um, they, you know, painting the, uh, or making the shelter match. It has, a, and since you're on a, 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 a <coughs> site that has uh, a water tank, which has a, a, I don't know what you would describe, the cement. Yeah, concrete, cement. more concrete. They, they composite do, material. Yeah, usually yeah. shelter is a composite material, also say that colored stone on the ground. On the, you could paint the shelter or match the water tank. Um, I mean, you know, there's, there's, I mean, you've heard of the monopine towers mm -hmm. uh, that make it look like a uh, a tree. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, quite frankly, you know, in an air, in an industrial area with two water tanks and a tree that 175 foot pine tree would look. There's nothing there that would um, those type of insulations are in the APA, you know, buried against a hillside, doing a 50 foot site with some fake branches. It makes some more sense, but when you're in an industrial area next to water tanks down in the open it, it, at that height we're proposing it doesn't make any any sense to do that right. except that when you're talking about an industrial it, it, it may be an industrial space but in a village mm -hmm. this size mm -hmm. it's really an entirely residential village you, yeah. you're going to have neighbors who are going to be looking at this tower pretty mm -hmm. much every time they look up in the air yeah i mean uh, it's so, understandable i mean it's not like you're a mile off in the middle of nowhere no. i mean it's certainly you are contiguous to a residential area uh, there's no way to make these these towers invisible mm -hmm. um, you know they are you know decent sized structures but it's mitigated by the fact that you already have structures that are there um of, of even more of a girth so to speak so this is something that uh but you'll find that most places, even with very restrictive zoning and planning, are very accepting of water tanks, not necessarily quite so accepting of cell phone towers. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, it, depend, yeah, it depends on the community. Water tanks, um, generally, a lot of times they're smack dab in the middle of a residential area, residential area. A lot of times they've been there for a long time. Uh, they do service the people. I, I would argue that cell phones are almost a necessity today. But water is something that yeah, is absolute necessity. You can't live without. So I think people look at that and weigh, yeah, weigh the differences on that. But I can take you that there's lots of water tank sites that have three or four carriers on them that are in the middle of very nice homes mm -hmm. um, in residential areas. 
there's a lot of areas that have towers right next to water tanks. Um, it's not a foreign concept. It's a dream of the future. I mean, it's just the way it is. Anybody else got any more questions? What about security required at your facility? Any concerns about that? Um, we fence in the compound, uh, the shelters, I mean, they're locked. There's barbed wire or those, not the prison barbed wire, but you know, they're like white wires yeah. got around their place. There's, there's, there's six or high chain of fences there. They're locked. Um, there's usually a motion light on the, on the shelter, so if anyone tries to jump in, the light goes off. The shelters, I believe, are alarmed if anyone tried to probe their way inside the shelter. I've never seen that happen. I mean, if someone really wants to jump a fence and get into the compound, they can do it. It's not a, uh, I mean, just no different than they can jump most fences and get into a, a person's yard or compound. Um, the tower, multiple towers, the, there are climbing pegs, but usually like the first 20 feet or so, there's not the pegs on there, so even if someone gets in, it's not like they can, usually they can't climb the tower. But if someone really, really wanted to do it, because they, there's always, they can do it. <laughs> And you mentioned, um, in terms of those, the two options that you have presented, uh, <coughs> if another carrier, I, I kind of missed what you said at the beginning of your presentation. You were going through the advantages of doing this, one of them being that the antenna would not be on the water tank, the other one being that there would be opportunities for other carriers, but then I, maybe I misunderstood you, but I thought you said something about it. If Verizon was successful, the opportunities for other carriers would be limited. Is that what you said, or I think on the, the, the tank itself, because of the the way it was designed, I mean it's a great tank. I mean for, for it's, it's a well very well built, beautiful water tank as far as water tanks go. But it, it's the type of design where even variety. I mean we looked at the six ways of Sunday. How can we run coax? You okay. know these big cables inside and. I think if Verizon went on it on the tank, I think it would be hard put to get if Sprint comes by next year and says we really want to go on the water tank, I think it would be hard put because of the limit the limitations of uh, the space on the tank. I don't think it's impossible, right. but now you're gonna start really making the tank look sloppy. So you were referring to the water tank at that time? Yeah. Okay. But let's talk about the other carriers who might be using the tower. Mm -hmm and their requirements that they would need then for ground space. You mentioned that with option two, you felt that the village would have more flexibility because there would be more control uh, in an agreement with the carrier as opposed to going through Verizon? Yeah, Ver Verizon, if, if another, if we'll use Sprint as an example, if they come in you know, a year, tower's built for a year, and Sprint wants to go on the tower, they would, they would contact Verizon most likely first Verizon lets other people on the tower. I've worked for Sprint next time, went on Verizon Towers. Um, then they would have to deal with the village directly and say, okay, we're putting our tents on Verizon's tower, but we need to lease a 10 by 20 space. I'm just using that as a, as a typical number. And the village would have to negotiate a lease separately with Sprint um, for X dollars a month. So they would be dealing directly with, with Sprint for their rent instead of dealing of going everything through Verizon. So with the option one that you had presented, it would be would the village have any control as to whether or not there's additional ground space that gets leased? Well if Verizon leased the fifty by fifty and T Mobile or Sprint came along, they would probably just go inside Verizon 50, uh, 50 by fifty, pay Verizon X amount of dollars a month and the village would get a, a few hundred dollars a month for that. But the village wouldn't it wouldn't be any additional land. Uh, the village would have no, they wouldn't have to deal with another carrier. I mean, sometimes it's more preferable because it's less management on the village's side. But with option two, they would not be within your enclosure? Or we could would, they be we, would, we would probably just put in a, just lease the area and show it on the lease that we're just leasing the equipment and the tower and maybe do a little fence around it. But if someone else comes on, they would have to deal directly with the, with the village for their ground space. Okay. Does that require additional height on the tower itself? to supply more antenna space? Um, we, we, I think we would build it adequate enough so if someone else came on that they'd go right below Verizon. Usually Verizon is say at 175 feet, another carrier could go at 165, 155 and so on. 
that, that might actually be something to consider would be to go a little higher yeah. initially so that other carriers could come in before. Because you, you'll only be able to go as low as until you hit the water tank. Because nobody's going to go low enough that the other antennas are shooting right outside the water tank. Because you see a, a lot of, like, you have certain zoning or planning boards, a lot of times they'll, a carrier will come in like Verizon and they'll say, okay, you can only build a tower to 90 feet, 10 or 20 feet over the tree line. Mm -hmm. And what happens when the second, or especially the third carrier, tries to come in, now all of a sudden they're below the trees. And I've seen it actually, you'll see some areas where there's actually two towers side by side. Because once you start going below the tree line, or if you're blocked by another structure like the water tank or a building, it really, it really affects the signal in a major way. Any other questions, Mark? Do you have any data on the on what Brian asked you in terms of health risks? You mentioned other communities. Do you have you collected any data? Absolutely, we can do a full. There's we can do a full study. Um, it's not not hard to do. Actually, a lot most of the time through a zoning process, we always usually provide it for mm -hmm. well, an NPE study, right, or a health and safety study that just outlines a little bit about what okay, that's not a problem. Um, I mean, our our. And I know there's been a few curveballs through the process, the tank versus a new tower, a couple different proposals in front of you. Um, you know, what we're looking for at this point, it doesn't have to be this minute, but you know, after we leave or the next meeting, just to kind of conceptually get an agreement and concept that this is where we're, we're you know, this is the direction we want to take so we can, I know your attorney's already looked at the lease and didn't have, I actually have to provide you a new lease because the one was a specific water tower, water tower lease. Mm -hmm. um, it's a uh, basically the same lease, but it's just a little bit more specific to building a tower. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it might be even an option in land lease where Verizon makes an option out through its due diligence period and the ability to get some compensation for that. Um, but that's all we need. And you know, the village, as you've seen, Mayor, is any drawings, anything that, you know. We are getting copied on and approving that. Board, any other questions? Well, we thank you, Joe, and we'll be in touch. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate if you have any follow-up questions or anything you need, certainly reach out to me. I got your business yeah. card. And, yep. Okay. And, okay. Uh, I really appreciate your time this evening. Thank, so, you. thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address the board at this time? They do so. If not, I'll close the public hearing at this time. Public uh, comments, uh, minutes of the previous meeting of May 5th. We we'll all have copies for it. Is there any additions or deletions? I'll make a motion to accept the uh, Minutes of the meeting of May 5th, 2008. Second. Moved by Trustee Jefferson, seconded by Trustee Burks. Any discussion? There being no discussion, all those in favor will play you sign a lie. Aye. Aye. Those opposed? <coughs> Motion carried. No. No, I have copies of the bills. Is there any addition or deletions, I said? No, there is not. Thank you. I'll make a motion to pay the bills tonight. Second. Moved by Trustee Jefferson, seconded by Trustee Baker. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor, vote by the user, sign a by. Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carried. Correspondence. The first letter I have is from the Clinton County Real Property Office. It's from Miranda Major. She's a data collection. I just want to take a minute to introduce myself. My name is Miranda Major. I am employed by the Clinton County Real Property Office as a Senior Assessment Control Examiner. I will be out in the town of Champlain, village of Champlain, and the village of Rosses Point collecting data for the Champlain Assessing Office. As part of my duties, I will be not only collecting new construction, but also going parcel to parcel, taking pictures of the structures on the parcels to attach to the property record cards at the town office. I wanted to take the time to let you know of my duties in the case that a resident approaches you and asks why there is someone taking pictures of their house. And then they, the number to contact me if anybody has any questions. That's just important. The next letter I have came from Elaine Clodier. 
uh, to the mayor and board of trustees, this letter is to advise you that as the last regent of the Catholic Daughters of the Americas Court Patricia number 962, I am officially donating to the village of Rosas Point for historical purposes the following. Ten books of minutes of the meetings, nine books of financial ledgers, two books of mortuary certificates, regent's gavel, officer's dress gloves, official court Patricia seal, awards, various blank forms, letterhead, newsletters, booklets, programs, etc., photos, history of the court. If a request to borrow any of the Catholic Daughters items is made by the acting parish priest of St. Patrick's Church, it is my wish that he be granted full access to all that is listed above. All items have been collected and delivered to the village historian Donna Racine by Mr. Ben Arno. Received a, a letter from uh, Andrew Ewart. He's the president of the Dodge Memorial Library. Please advise the village board at their upcoming meeting that the library trustees at their ninth, April 9, 2008 meeting approved the employment of Geraldine Favreau to be a substitute for any staff member who may not be able to work assigned hours. She will substitute for all the library staff only if none of the non-scheduled staff cannot fill in for a regular staff member who cannot fulfill assigned hours. She will be paid using the money that would be forfeited by the staff member who needs to be substituted for. So they're just more funny. And then I did get a copy of uh, resignation. Um, I am sending more, spending more of the year in Florida these days, so I would like to take my name off the list of library clerks. This way you will be able to train someone in time for your new automation project. I have enjoyed the time I spent working in the library. Thank you for your giving me the opportunity. And that was from George Marnes, who resigned from the position. Great to see you, Bill. No. <laughs> Okay, the next item I have is uh, from Montgomery Post number 912, the American Legion. American Legion, Montgomery Post 912, is planning a flag burning ceremony on Memorial Day, May 26, 2008, at our post home at 29 Pratt Street. I think that date may be wrong. We had 2007. So it may be on Monday. I, I'm it not is. really sure. We Memorial respectfully Day, request please. an exemption from the ordinance. Uh, prohibiting outside burning for the purpose of properly disposing of unserviceable flags. And that's from Hector Coffin, commander. We need a motion on that. I'll make a motion to allow the American Legion to do the flag burning ceremony. Also, yeah. Moved by Trustee Penfield, seconded by Trustee Baker. Any discussion? There being no discussion, all those in favor of vote by the Eastern Side of Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. And the next item I received was from the New York State Conference of Mayors on the planning and zoning summer schools for 2008. And there appears to be a schooling in Queensbury Town Hall um, July 23rd. And the cost for each school is $60 per person. And their space is limited, so as soon as they get them in, I believe last year we approved like 12 or 15 people because they wanted the zoning board, the planning board, and anybody else that wished to attend. So. I need a motion to allow planning and zoning to attend if they can't wait to do so. I believe Mike Tatcher wants to attend also. So. I'll make a motion to uh, allow the planning or zoning board to attend. Second. Second. Moved by Trustee Burt, seconded by Trustee Jefferson. Any discussion? We should just check if, if Mike wants to go, whether or not he's registered yet through the town. Okay. Because this is also... No, he won't, he won't be registered in the town. At there right now. Town does not get this. This is NICOM, so... This is NICOM. Well, in conjunction with the Association of Towns of the State of New York. So, it's right on here. I'll check. I'll just check. Just so that we don't double up. That's yeah, well, I understand. Would you want to just prove him to go also if you, if you can? Sure. Or? So 11, up to 11. Perhaps it would be nice that the town would share in the cost for Mike. So no bill. Mr. Cooper, you want to go to this? John, I love it. It's a shared service. Yeah, I love it. Good one. I'll ask him tomorrow to check yeah. Yeah. see if he'll take I want to uh, yeah. check with yeah. the supervisor. Because I believe that part of what we entered into the agreement with, there was supposed to be some training money in his contract. So okay. we ought to okay. check on that. So 
So, so are you still approving him to attend with that understanding? Or? Well, it's like Kelly said, it's part of the contract because it's part of training, and so well, we can approve it. We can approve it. Check, check this all out. Yeah. So, <coughs> you approve eleven to attend, and if you can't, I'll check on the training yeah. for him. Show me my sure. Oh, I have that page. I don't have that. <laughs> I don't have that. That's fine. I missed that one in See, you didn't believe me, George. No, I believe you, but I just, I, I, I can't believe the conference of mayors. I can't believe it. No, what I can't believe is the conference of mayors actually joining with the association of towns because they, they're like this most of the time. Maybe they have a lot of shared services like we do up here. You never know. Maybe they catch it on. That's right. Share it to your life. Okay, okay motion made. Shared services. <laughs> motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? There being no discussion, all those in favor will use the sign of aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carried. That's all I have. Thank you, uh, Carol. Report of the Board of Trustees and the Mayor. The only thing I have on my agenda tonight is the discussion of, of Verizon Tower. Uh, I don't know if the Board wants to discuss this any further at this point or if they want to wait for the next meeting or what. Um, if we agree to do this, then they, you know, they're going to have to come back here with all the plans and everything else. So. Right. Well, we can discuss it if you'd like to, or you want to. Well, I'm just saying. You want to yeah. have it at some other meeting, or what? It doesn't matter to me. You probably discussed it when I missed last week. No, it wasn't we much discussion. It. Discussion. The next step would be to either approve it or deny it, right? Okay. Well, I would assume that before they could actually do anything. We would have to formulate a lease that Tom Renee would then have to. Oh, yeah. Sign off well, everything would have to go through the attorney. Yeah, there's no way that we. Well, maybe I don't. They're, they're going to spend $500,000. You know, maybe yeah. not as much, but they're talking about that. To have coverage for the gold yards. I think it's. That's it. Yeah, they're you heard the men talk. Yeah, they're filling in the area. That's what they're doing. They're, they're filling in. I have small hamlets. Spot, it's funny coverage, so maybe for them it's a, it's a way to advertise that maybe in the northeast corner of New York State they have coverage. Well, you know what will happen, John. John, John you, know, people will you, know, you know what's going to happen once they find out that everybody's got, you've got coverage here. The I foresee it's like we have Nextel. Mm -hmm. uh, as much as I like Nextel with the talk around, mm -hmm. right? Wouldn't it be better for us to go from Verizon? Because eventually they're going to have it all the way down the north way. Exactly. They're already, they're already yeah. got approval for two towers. I, mean, they, I know they have it out west. Yeah. yeah. Out west. And, I mean, mm -hmm. it's... They must have heard that Grouse's point was up and coming then. <laughs> cell <laughs> service. The, uh, our residents are obviously very important to them. They want to make sure that their compound is going to fit into our design guidelines, so we'll make sure that the building that they... I mean, they're going to have to go. They're going to have to go to the zoning and planning board, you know, and get all them approvals and stuff. I mean, I've done it with some few people, and they want. Okay, I don't think you're going to see any internal lists. How many people work at Wyeth? Six hundred, eight hundred, right now. So you're talking eight hundred, and, and you know, so I mean, that's another. You know, I'm surprised that the coverage doesn't get all the way to Champlain. Does it? But they have a tower in Champlain. The tower in Champlain and the tower here, they keep going yeah. through separate. But they're in that. Technology, John. Well, I, guess. I don't think anyone is debating the fact. It, it, I don't think you're finding anyone who's going to stand up and say, I don't want better cell coverage. It's, the only question is whether or not we're doing it in the way that's the best for the village. And it may be best for people with cell phones, but it may not be best for the village. And I, I guess I'm not convinced that those two things are exactly the same. So, you know, it's very hard to sit here and say, you don't, I'm certainly not going to say I don't want better cell coverage. I think you're right. I think a lot of people, Bumper and Brian, I think you guys are right. Oh, yeah. A lot of people do want better cell coverage. Yeah. But the question is, have we done the best that we can do on behalf of the village? Well, we can't drag our feet any longer, I don't think. I don't think we're going to get much of a better deal. Well, our deal just got reduced by, you know, a third right. from yeah. last meeting to this meeting. What are we getting right now? Nothing. Well, but that that doesn't matter. I mean, they haven't built the tower yet. So you, you know, you want you, 
I just want to make sure that, that, because the other thing I mentioned to George this afternoon that I consider to be quite a big deal is the fact that we are leasing public land, not to a nonprofit, but to a business which stands to profit from it. And I think that's a pretty weighty precedent. It, it's something to think about. It's public land that we have that we're going to be leasing to a private contractor, basically, for the purposes of helping them make money. And, well, and obviously... Well, like I told you, Kelly, there's other communities that do it. We can uh, contact them and see what their problems were. Right, because if they're willing to spend close to a half a million dollars to set up this tower and this building, the $1,000 a month they're paying the village of Rouse's Point is not very much. Obviously, they see the potential for an awful lot of revenue. Yeah, but... And so that has been my only point in both of the meetings prior to now. Not that I'm against improving cell coverage. That's not the point. There are two things. And, and the, to me, the biggest one is allowing a private company to lease village property for the purposes of their increasing their revenue. And are we doing that in the right way for the village? And I don't know. Maybe we are, maybe we aren't. Not we can chat with other people, but these people... Well, well at that location, what do you know, I, I kind of, uh, I would agree with, in principle with Kelly, but in that particular location we have a commercial property, it's a dead end. We got a railroad mm -hmm. property that's on the other side. Okay. And really, <laughs> what, what else could we use the space for, I guess? And, you know, if we, if we had a gas pipeline and it had to come through, same thing. Would that have been an area where it, it would have come through underground, come through the town of Champlain? It's already there. And it's there. It's there. And they do have a station there, don't they have some kind of a station? Metering station for what? Yeah. Right there. But the, the gas line, if if the village decided to put gas in or allow them to come in here with gas, that's where they come from. That's a 400, I think it's 400 pound PSI line in there. And, we, and we'd have to do it underground to... It'd be, it, it, it always the, was. I'd say that we had a company that was going to come through, we'd have to go through the village with this. Yeah, they all, they, now we'd have to give them, we'd have to give them right away from the easement. In fact, if we approved it, we couldn't stop them going in our easements. So, by law. I already found that little question at, out. At the location um, where, we, where we're located, it's going to be north of the water tank. It's almost going to be a, a dead end anyway. Right when you come up water. by Wyatt, right when you get to the stop sign. Right on the corner. It's going to be right in front of you. They're right there. Probably. Yeah. They'd be the well, it's actually the, almost even with the tank. pushed back, right over back on the line. We will look at it today. I told them, I said, you see that big hump out there? You got to stay away from that. And when you're close to it, I mean, when you're further away, it's going to be more noticeable than if you're close to it. You know, like people that live actually live on Priscilla or at your apartment. It's no different than the other water tower there. Yeah. It's the same thing. We've got a water tower we're not using. Basically, basically the water tower is going to be the water tower. We're going to light it. We're going to light it. Basically. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they're both going to be the same yeah. height. But, yeah. What do you want to do, board? Okay, I'm going to make a motion to allow Verizon to build a tower in the village of Elsa's Bay. I would uh, change that motion. I would authorize uh, uh, Verizon to go ahead with engineering and studies to allow them to build a tower. Let me uh, <laughs> modify that motion. Yeah. Uh, I well, that that way, oh, no, you're right. That's, right. that's the most correct way to do it, too. Yeah. Because the longer we hold on to this, it's only going to be two more weeks, two more weeks. Either we're going to do it or we're not going to do it. So I'll make a motion to allow Verizon to go ahead to do this studying, the pre preemptive, or what do you call it, preliminary, studies to go forward to build a uh, cell phone tower. Cell phone tower in Village Rouse's Point. I'll put that point of motion. I'll second. Moved by Trustee Jefferson. Seconded by Trustee Baker. Is there any more discussion? No more discussion. Yes, our said. That's not a rule. All you're doing is just approving them to allow to uh, Yeah. They've got to come. You're not, you're not, you're not specific, specifying any specific area or anything. 
<clears throat> my problem is, yeah, put that in, the, in our village water tank, property in our village water tank. The location mm -hmm. being at the, at the northeast corner. Is it the northeast or northwest? Northeast. northeast. The northeast corner of the village. village property where the water tower is on Academy Street. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor vote by user sign of aye. Aye. Those opposed? I'm opposed. Motion carried. Okay, next thing on my agenda is uh, our said we're going to need your help on this one. Uh, we've gotten three quotes on removing the asbestos from that little building down there that we own. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? And the low code is two two thousand six hundred seventy-five dollars. Uh, our engineer recommends that we take that quote, and I don't know where we can get the money from. Can you find some somewhere? Because it's not in the budget. <laughs> once that's once the asbestos is out of there, uh, Brian can take the rest of the building down with no problem. What's it, the asbestos that's in it? Just, just, just roof. Well, just to tell you, the roof material, half of the roof, because half the roof is in, half the roof is uh, the shingle, shingle and the putty in the windows. Asbestos? Yeah. The only asbestos that's in the building. So they have to take the windows out and cover them. Yeah. And it can go to regular landfill, believe it or not, but it's still asbestos. Yeah. And the dog and all these people went through it after we had that asbestos checked up. All it does is raise costs. Though. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ever hear such a thing? The putty in the windows. Yeah, I, I have to do that. Uh, That's a big most thing. of the windows uh, done back in oh two nineteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds, or even up to nineteen fifty. That's just in the putty. Remember when she wanted to be very proud of the development out there? Yeah. She had old windows in her house, and Dennis was going to take the things, to take the house, and clean it up. So there it is. I need a motion to go ahead with it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Did he say he had the money or no? I don't know. He said he was looking underneath the chair. He's looking at Brian to see if you have any money. Brian. He was looking underneath the chair. Our son maybe got some in your shoe there. Well, I mean, I gotta look at the budget. I mean, I can't give you an answer now, but I mean, I'm sure we can find it somewhere. Yeah. That's good enough for me. It's good enough for me. All right, I need a motion. <laughs> I'll make a motion. That's the guys from Verizon. They get a half a million. To accept the quote to have the asbestos removed from the building at 115 Lake Street. With Catamount Cat Environment. Don't. Environmental. Canada Environmental. Mm -hmm. For $2,675. Second. Moved by Trustee Burt. Seconded by Trustee Jefferson. Is there any other discussion? Do we know who Catamount Environmental is? Doug does. He's done business. He's done business for all these years. They're from Wilmington, Vermont. Oh, you got it right there? I all right. Any other discussion? I have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carried. That's it for me, Trustee Jefferson. Okay. Uh, the only item on my agenda tonight is <laughs> your favorite thing to do. <laughs> I'm not going to make a this big long speech on it. We got to write these electric bills off. The money has come down. Last year it was about eight thousand. It's come down to five thousand. Oh, lowest amount since two thousand three. Lowest amount down one thousand six hundred thirteen dollars and forty two cents. Okay, so I'll make a motion to write off the bad debts, the electric bad debts. And if, we'll give you the figure again here. I don't know. Oh, here's I got it here. 550454. So I'll make a motion to. Excuse me, to read the name? No. I like to put it in paper. We won't do that. Publishing. 
Now, now the, the, the policy. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll make that motion to uh, <laughs> write these debts off. I don't like to do it, but we have to do it. I'll so, second it. Moved by Trustee Jefferson. Seconded by Trustee Penfield. Any discussion? Yes. What is the? Uh, some of these are extensive. What is the limit? Is it a 30-day limit, 60-day limit? What do we? When the person is in arrears on their payment of their electricity, when? At what time do we notify them, and can we reduce that time at all? Right. Is it 30 days? Is it after the first month? We can shut pay? them off after their 45 days in arrears. 45 days. And that's only between April 15th and October 15th. Yeah, in between there, you can't do anything. You can't do anything. So these, I would assume, are like winter. Because like one of the, the only really two high ones are 967 and 745. Mm -hmm. And George says, why can't we put load limit on these people and try to, you know, and we see they're getting up there. I would, I would assume some of these are over the winter months. Yeah, they're all over the winter months, I'm sure. But this person, or persons that are here, these people, they, some of these people skip out and landlords don't even tell us they're gone. Yeah, the people that skip with the remodel. So I, I, I understand that, that but, but you know, we'll take that 967. In the middle of uh, the January, they got a $200, $200 bill, and then it comes down to, to the 15th of February, uh, they got another two hundred dollars. That's when the load limit should go on. After that, forty-five days, no questions asked. They should you put it on. No more forty-five. And when it comes April fifteenth, you go up and you pull the damn meter. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds hard nosed, but damn it all, every one of us in this room is paying for this. Cost us a hundred dollars right. a week to rate this off. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's better than it was. These are all any commercial debts. These are all residential. No, they're commercial. No, no. WWBITV. Yeah. $8.47. Let me just commercial. Any other discussion, board? No. Roll call vote. Trustee Jefferson. Aye. Trustee Penfield. Aye. Trustee Birch. Aye. Trustee Baker. Aye. And then they will vote. Aye. Not really. That's it for you? Uh, yes. The only Thank thing you. I want to just say real quick is uh, the other day when we had a little disturbance in the village over the weekend, we had trouble with cell coverage. I'm standing next to Sergeant Patterson. And he, we're trying to do emergency traffic over the cell phone. In some places we could get in, some places we could get out. So there is a problem, obviously, with the cell phone. Do you coverage. have a Verizon phone? I didn't ask him what kind he had. But I had a Nextel. And I say here, use mine. Uh, on, that, on that subject, now you brought it up, um, nobody wants to give credit where credit's due, but uh, I was out of town. Uh, Trustee Jefferson called me. I got back Sunday, and I was told that the Russell's Point Fire Department did themselves proud at that fire. They had fire knocked down in three minutes. And there's a couple of people, Eric Miller and Brian Pelkey, had a lot to do with that, and they're you know uh, they, these you know it's time that acolytes are given instead of uh, state police getting total coverage for everything that happened up there. Did we find a radio. There was a radio missing. It's already done. Mm -hmm. no, I, I mean, one, I have no. Oh, okay. No, no, Fire department? Or? No, he said it was a village radio. Get up to turn the power off real quick. They thought it was on the corner of Maple and Chapman, and it might have been lost. <coughs> I haven't heard anything. You find it? Yeah. Must be found. Right. That is uh, that's it. Okay. okay. Trusty Kelly. Trusty Kelly. Trusty Kelly. Sorry. Yeah. It's okay. It doesn't bother me a bit. Um, I have only one item to act on tonight. We are not going to have the executive session that was reported on the agenda because of a lack of information at this point, hopefully more information.